in order to assist Ukraine, mercenaries from the United States took. The mercenaries who are currently making their way to the city of Bakhmut, which is currently under blockade by Russian soldiers, intend to engage in combat with the Russian army once they arrive. As soon as the conflict between Russia and Ukraine broke out, thousands of mercenaries from the West entered the fight on the Ukrainian side. Mercenaries from a variety of countries, including the United States of America, the United Kingdom, Poland, Germany, Sweden, Colombia, and France joined the International Legion that was founded by Ukraine. Despite the fact that the forces ostensibly commanded by former NATO officers and generals in retirement, it is technically considered to be part of the Ukrainian army. On Ukraine's Eastern Front, Wagner warriors will face off against mercenaries from the, the man who founded Wagner and is also Putin's private cook, satisfied his need for infantry to perish by releasing prisoners from prisons. Officials from Wagner went to prisons within Russia's boundaries and captured regions, including the Khan, Zapia, Tus, and Luhansk regions that Russia annexed in Ukraine in order to recruit in. Convicts of everyday crimes such as homicide, drug trafficking, rape, kidnapping, and arson amongst others demonstrated a significant amount of interest in this proposition. During the course of the conflict, more than 50,000 prisoners served under the command of Wagner, U.S. mercenaries set. In addition to this, Wagner controlled an elite paramilitary force that numbered over 10,000 strong and was made up of former military personnel and members of special operations as freelancers. Many Chetniks and former Serbian soldiers from Serbia and ally of Russia in the Balkans joined Wagner's forces in this manner. Mercenaries working for the West and Russia met each other for the first time in. Yesterday, American mercenaries assembled in Ukraine and then headed in the direction of Bachman. Russian troops are getting ready to encircle the city of Bachman, which serves as the key to the Donetsk province in the Donbass region of Ukraine. The city of Bom, where the Ukrainian army suffered a loss of 20,000 soldiers, is the last stronghold of one of the most significant defense lines in Danks. If Bom it falls, Dan's final line of defense will be the Chromatok Lava's line, and Russian forces will be able to thoroughly capture Dansk if they are successful. James Vasquez, an American mercenary and his social media phenomenon, posted a picture on his Twitter account showing a portion of the convoy that will deliver supplies to Bombit. The city of Bachman almost disappeared. Bachman, which is situated in the Donetsk region of Ukraine, became an important point in the conflict during the most recent phase of the war, and it also became the new symbol of the Ukrainian resistance. While the Ukrainian forces, who had been on the defensive for months against the relentless bombardment of the Russian troops, reached the point of exhaustion, Zelensky admitted that the situation in the city was bad and accused the Moscow administration of disregarding human. Although the drone imagery showed the level of devastation that had occurred in the city, Zelensky described described the city as having been almost destroyed following the withdrawal signal from the Kiev government. Western media reported that Vladimir Putin was on the verge of a great triumph. These reports were based on their minute-by-minute -minute coverage of the Bachman resistance. The Russian military will have achieved a significant triumph after a period of six months if they are successful in capturing the strategic city, and this will pave the way for the conquest of the remaining urban cores in the Donetsk region. By doing so, Russia will be able to exert authority over the entirety of the industrial zone. Russia, which had been unable to locate what had expected at the beginning of the war and had suffered heavy losses as a result, had reinforced hundreds of thousands of reserved soldiers to the region after the second half of the year. 2022, Putin's new lie. The new strategy of Vladimir Putin is to deceive and sabot. Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, called the armed assault that occurred in his country's Brian region a terrorist act and stated they will not succeed. We will suppress them. Putin has made statements regarding the armed attacks that have been carried out by sabotage groups, which he claims are associated with the army of the Ukrainian. Putin said, Our citizens are being guarded by Russian military from the Nazis and terrorists who have been torturing and killing people for the past eight years in the Donbas and are responsible for the death of Daria Dugan in Moscow. They have once more carried out a terrorist act, committed a criminal act, and attacked our border region today. They started fire on the civilians once they were, despite the fact that they could see that the vehicle belonged to civilians and that there were civilians and children inside the car, they opened fire. I have no doubt that their owners will not even recollect the infraction that occurred today. But I want to stress once more that they will not be successful because we will repress them. Claims of sabotage emanating from Moss. In Russia, the governor of the Brian region, Alexander Bose, made the announcement that an armed attack by Ukrainian sabotage groups had resulted in the death of one person in a village located in the region and that the Russian armed forces had taken the necessary actions to eliminate this group. 
It was reported in the news that appeared in the Russian press that sabotage groups had taken approximately six persons hostage at the market in the village of Lekain, and that clashes had taken place between the soldiers of Rosvia and the sabotage group. According to the Kremlin spokesperson, Dmitry Peskov, Vladimir Putin canceled his visit to the Stapel region because of the situation that developed following the armed attack in the Brion. He also stated that Putin received regular updates on the subject from the Russian security forces. Ukraine denies Russia's allegations. According to MIG, Kyle Padak, an advisor to the Ukrainian presidential office, Russia's assertion that Ukrainian sabotage groups were responsible for the attacks was a classic provocation, published a statement on social media in which he referred to sabotage organizations operating in the Brian region of Russia. Padak said the alleged presence in Russia of Ukrainian sabotage organizations is a classic example of an act intended to provoke a response, completely see, in order to find some way to rationalize the invasion of another country and the worsening economic situation brought on by the year-long conflict, Russia is attempting to instill fear within its own population. In the meantime, the movement of loyalists in Russia is becoming both more powerful and more confrontational. Beware of your own party's support. After a period of six months, Russia is very close to achieving triumph in the midst of signals from the Kiev government to withdraw from the critically important city of Bakhmut, where a bloody war has been going on for months. Western media reported that Russian President Putin was on the verge of triumph after six months. Had, on the first anniversary of the conflict, everyone's attention is focused on Bakhmut, a small mining town in the eastern part of Ukraine. An astonishing declaration has just come from the administration in Kiev as Russian soldiers move closer to taking control of the industrial city, warning signs of withdrawal from, according to Alexander Rotsky, economic advisor to President Zelensky of Ukraine who is speaking with CNN. It is possible for Ukrainian forces to be withdrawn from the city. Rodsky stated that the army will evaluate all of the available options, and he stated, our forces have maintained control of Bachman up until this point. They will strategically withdraw if it becomes imperative. We will not allow our people to perish for no. Ukrainian MP Surti, Rockman made a similar statement to NV Radio saying there is no sense in trying to hold on to the city by any means necessary. In the end, I believe that we will depart from Bachman according to Rockman and the soldiers could be withdrawn if there was a planned evacuation. Germany re-rejected Putin's demands. Olaf Eschels, the Chancellor of Germany, reaffirmed his country's support for Ukraine in the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Eschels said Russia has not given up hope of achieving a military triumph. However, this triumph will not be achieved if Ukraine gives up its ability to protect. The result will not be peace. Rather, it will be the end of Ukraine. As Scholl stated that Russian President Vladimir Putin is not willing to adhere to principles and negotiated just peace, which he argued in his statement. The nationalism displayed by Putin should not be tolerated when you have a gun to your throat. It is impossible to negotiate. For this reason, we are by his side as he defends the boundaries of. If this continues, there will be no more Ukrainian. In response to criticism leveled at his nation's efforts to prevent Russia from attacking Ukraine with military force, German Chancellor Ola Eschel stated, You cannot create peace by shouting never war in Berlin and demanding that all weapons shipments to Ukraine be stopped. Love does not imply submitting to the authority of a more powerful. If Ukraine were deceased, defending itself, it would not be peace. It would be the end of Ukraine. Schulz's statement was in reference to China's treatment of Russia and he urged China to refrain from providing Russia with any weaponry. Slovakia has announced that it can deliver 10 fighter jets to Ukraine. Ukraine has been informed by Slovakia that Slovakia is prepared to give over 10 of its 11 fighter jets of the MiG-29. During an interview with the Associated Press News Agency, Slovakia's Minister of Defense, Nat stated that the country no longer uses MiG-29 aircraft due to a shortage of spare parts and maintenance specialists for the aircraft. These aircraft are of no real use to us in any way. If we send them to Ukraine, they may be able to save peoples. The minister noted that Slovakia is prepared to hand over 10 of the 11 aircraft that are currently in its possession to Ukraine and stated that the final decision is anticipated to be made within the next few days. Two significant blasts were reported in Crimea. It was reported that throughout the nighttime hours in the Russian-occupied portion of the Crimea Peninsula, the sounds of explosions could be heard following one. In regions of Russian-occupied Crimea close to the cities of Ba, Kyr, and Yelta, the sound of explosions was audible. It was discovered that the explosion in Ba Sire took place in areas adjacent to the military facilities of the Russian army that was occupying the city. It was reported in the telegram groups, which included people who lived in Crimea, that the explosions could be heard clearly from the civilian communities in the. It was stated that it was possible that the assaults were coordinated by the covert resistance organization that had been established in Crimea to put an end to the Russian occupation of Crimea. The locals there formed
around a group of rebels who dubbed themselves these SH. Regular assaults on Russian headquarters are carried out by personnel of the fire on the other side. Members of H share information with the Ukrainian army regarding Russian soldier. Russia has committed another crime against humanity. A student in Russia by the name of Masha Moscow Villa, who was only 12 years old at the time, was expelled for sketching an anti-war cartoon. Russia is punishing those Russians who are opposed to the conflict because it is worried about the reaction of the general public. A scandal has been discovered in Russia by the Independent Human Rights Observator, known as OVD. The picture that went viral was one in which a Russian student of the sixth grade articulated that he did not support the war that had been initiated against Ukraine. Masha Moska, then 12 years old, rose to prominence with her anti-war painting and was subsequently placed in an institution. Moska included the phrases noted, conflict and victory to Ukraine in the painting that she drew next to the Ukrainian and Russian flags. Respect. On the other hand, the news that was reflected in the Russian media claimed that Alexei Moscow, who was Moscow Eva's father and is 53 years old, was taken to prison in April of 2022. The art instructor took notice of Moscow Eva's drawing, and she reported it to the principal of the school. A few days later, agents from the Federal Security Service went to see Moscow at her. After some time had passed, Alexei Muva SR was accused of disparaging the Russian army for a statement that he had made on social media. The war between Russia and Ukraine might come to a conclusion all on its own. According to Christine Weymouth, the United States Secretary of the Land Forces armed operations may come to an end on their own within the next two. While speaking at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, Weymouth acknowledged that the fighting was lasting longer than expected. He went on to say, however, I believe the war in Ukraine will end on its own within the next year or two. In his statement, the United States Under Secretary of Defense, Colin Cole, mentioned that they were unable to make a prediction regarding how long the conflict in Ukraine would last, and that the military activities could come to an end in six months or after two or three months. Since the beginning of Russia's military activity in Ukraine, the United States has provided more than $100 billion in aid to that. The Republican Party is advocating for improved monitoring and controls over the shipment of weapons. The guy with the most guts in all of Ukraine, the Russia-Ukraine conflict is covered in the videos that are shared on the Telegram channel. The most recently circulated movie was simultaneously viewed by millions of people all at. The following expressions were used in the video. Ukraine's bravest fighter is attacking the Russian tank alone while opening fire without being impacted by the bullets and explosions. The footage shows a lone Ukrainian solidar in a trench attacking a Russian tank while he is taking fire himself. He is unfazed by the gunfire coming his way. Rocket launcher in possession. The Ukrainian solider attacking the Russian tank causes damage to the Russian. The carefree demeanor of the Ukrainian soldier captured the attention of people from all over the globe. The next until today, neo-Nazis have asserted that they were the ones responsible for the assaults on Russian village. The Russian Volunteer Corps RDK has taken responsibility for the assaults on Russian villages. We are warriors of the Russian Volunteer Corps. The Brian Alast is where we are currently recording this movie. We did not come here in order to commit acts of sabotage. Rather, we are an army dedicated to the emancipation of our native. We are not battling against civilians. In contrast to the army of murderers and rapists led by Putin, you will now be free. Thanks to our arrival, we implore you to take up weapons and engage in combat against the ruthless regime imposed by Putin and the Kremlin to the dictator who rules from the Kremlin. Dennis Khan, who is thought to be the leader of the group, is heard saying the following things. In another video that was distributed by RDK, he is heard saying the Russian Volunteer Corps came to show its compatriots in Brian Gallows that there is hope that the free Russian people can fight the regime with weapons in their hands. Neo-Nazis as reported by The Telegraph. According to The Telegraph, one of the leading newspapers in the United Kingdom, both Captain, also known as Nick Kion, and the unidentified individual standing next to him are neo-Nazis who fled to Ukraine before the war and fought against the Kremlin, along with the AZA Battalion, which is comprised of neo-Nazis from the Ukrainian army. The RDK is comprised of extremists on the right who have been taking part in confrontations against Russia since 2014. The conflict in Ukraine began on February 24th of the previous year, and this group is a component of the Regional Defense Forces, which formally entered the Ukrainian army shortly after the conflict began. Putin's statement in response to the assaults in Brez, Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, referred to what happened yesterday as an act of terrorism, despite his assertion that the assaults were carried out by saboteurs from. As a result of the attack, one civilian was reportedly killed and six other people were reported to have been taken hostage. According to the reports in the Russian media, Andrei Sov, a spokesman for the Ukrainian military intelligence, refuted the allegations and claimed that the assault was orchestrated by Russian groups that are battling against the regime of of Vladimir Putin assassination attempt by the United States of. 
after a group from Ukraine infiltrated the Bryan region of the Kovsky town of Russia to sabotage, and the Ukrainian army hit some targets on Russian soil. The Kremlin's claim that the attacks were carried out with the support of the USA was met with a reaction in the Pentagon. The Ukrainian army hit some targets on Russian territory. Pentagon spokesman, Brigadier General Ryder said, I have seen some accounts that assert that Russian officials, first and foremost, the United States, provided information in some way to facilitate these attacks. We don't give the Ukrainians any instructions on where to attack. It is complete nonsensical to think that we are imparting knowledge or information to others. We are not at war with Russia, nor are we actively pursuing a conflict with that. Ryder, on the other hand, stated that they consulted for the use of weapons provided to Ukraine only within Ukraine, and for the defense of Ukrainian lands, Ryder said that this was to ensure that the weapons were used appropriately. Russian institutions that practice torture, the Mobile Justice Team, which investigates war crimes and is sponsored by the United States. The United Kingdom and the European Union has made the allegation that Russia has established at least 20 torture centers in the city of Khan, which is located in Ukraine. It was claimed in the report that was published by the organization that consisted of lawyers that the Russian state was responsible for planning and financing the torture centers in. The British attorney, Wayne Jordash, who was in charge of leading the team, had this to say about the study the torture chambers used on a mass scale in Ukraine are not a random act. Rather, they are part of a well-thought-out and financially supported plan devised by the Russian government to eradicate Ukraine's distinct national and cultural traditions. It was reported that the findings of the study were based on the testimonies of at least a thousand people who supposedly escaped from the torture chambers, as well as the investigations that were carried out in the city, beatings and acts of cruelty. According to the research, 400 people went missing in the city while it was under Russian occupation from March 2nd until November 11th. It was speculated that these people may have been killed or forcefully taken to Russia by the Russian. According to the allegations made by the organization, the torture centers in question were run by local organizations in collaboration with the Russian Federal Security Service, the Federal Prison Service, and the Kremlin. It was alleged that detainees, including women, were subjected to various forms of physical and psychological abuse, including beatings, torture with electricity, and various forms of strang. Jordash said, invading Ukraine, subjugating the Ukrainian people to Russian rule and eradicating Ukrainian culture are all part of Vladimir Putin's master scheme. As more evidence of war crimes emerges and our investigations move forward, this strategy will become more transparent. During the time that Kherson was occupied by the occupiers, it was reported by Reuters a month ago that approximately 200 Ukrainians were held in 10 torture facilities within the city. The conflict is becoming increasingly challenging as Russia makes efforts to regain control of QPQK. The Ukrainian government has ordered some of the city's inhabitants to. The military leadership in Kiev urged families and those with limited mobility to evacuate the city because Russian troops were constantly shelling the city. Early on in the full-scale incursion, Russia captured the city, which served as a significant supply hub. However, Ukraine was able to retake control of it in September of last year. In the meantime, the Wagner Group claims that its soldiers have practically surrounded Bakh. At the beginning of this week, President Vladimir Zelensky acknowledged that the situation in Bakhman, which is located approximately 130 kilometers, 80 miles south of KK, was becoming more and more difficult in KK. The Kiev Regional Military Administration issued an order for the population to evacuate because of an unstable security situation, which was caused by Russia's bombardment of the town and the areas surround. It was stated that those who were evacuated would be provided with assistance such as housing, food, humanitarian help, and medical support. According to the information provided, other citizens are also allowed to travel outside of the territory. Before the conflict, there were approximately 25.000 people living in the city, getting out of town. This week, the Institute for the Study of War reported that Russian forces were conducting limited ground assaults northeast of KK, as well as offensive operations around Krimina, which are located approximately 80 kilometers, 50 miles south of Cubans. Since the beginning of the war, fierce battling has taken place in Keynes, which is home to a significant railway junction. Russia was able to seize control of the city in a matter of days and continue to occupy it for a number of months. However, in September, Ukrainian forces were able to regain control in the midst of a rapid counterattack in the country's east that resulted in several towns coming under the leadership of Kyiv. These advances were the most substantial change to the front line that has occurred since Russia pulled out of areas around Kyiv in. While the evacuation in KK is indicative of a deteriorating situation there, Bachman has been experiencing fierce battling for several months. 
On Friday, Yegeni Pioren, the leader of the paramilitary organization, Wagner, stated that the Piners are closing in around Bachmann. In a video that was uploaded to Telegram, Wagner troops had practically encircled the city, according to what he said in a direct message that he sent to President Zelen. And there was only one road left. He issued a plea to the president of Ukraine to withdraw from the capital. The most recent updates on the situation in Bachman City. Recent weeks have seen a rise in the intensity of fighting in the area close to the city of Bachman, which is located on the front line in the Donetsk region of eastern Ukraine. In the video that he captured on March 2, 2023, the Chechen Sheikh Mansur battalion soldier who fought on the side of Ukraine in the region, which was the scene of intense clashes between the occupying Russian army and the Ukrainian army, used the following statements. We are in charge. We are working to save the community in Ukraine, which is currently being bombarded by Russia. The conflict has now entered its first full year. The Ukrainian armed forces are putting up a powerful resistance as they launch attacks against the invading Russian forces. Russia decided to modify its strategy and concentrate on the eastern regions of Ukraine after making plans to take Kyiv within the next two. Russia maintains its offensive against Ukrainian forces while occupying the settlement of Bakhmut. Put your faith in the Ukrainian military forces in the city of Bomlet. The invading Russians and the Ukrainian forces are engaged in fierce fighting with one another. A member of the Chechen Sheikh Mansur Battalion, who is currently serving in the region and who is providing the most up-to-date information regarding the situation in the region. The situation in Bachman is a challenging. On the other hand, we are in charge. We are working to save the community. Therefore, have faith in the Ukrainian military forces. Children in Ukraine receive instruction in the use of firearms from Russia. Young Army also known as Anarm, is a movement that was initiated by the Russian Ministry of Defense and is currently operating in occupied regions of Ukraine to educate children, teach them to use weapons and engage in propaganda activities that are favorable to Russia. Russia has begun to familiarize children in the Khan and Zapia region, which it has occupied for the past nine years with arms similar to what it has done in Crimea, and it has begun to disseminate war propaganda among children. It was rumored that the occupiers in the city of Genesis coerced children to join the Unia Young Army Organization organization, which was founded on the initiative of the Russian Ministry of. Esk was occupied by the Russian military deputy chairman of the Regional Council for the Kherson region. Yuri Sofsky made the following comment in relation to the topic at hand in the territory of Genesk. The ridiculous practice known as an arm is still being carried out as it has been for some time. Now, they make the children wear military uniforms against their will and subject them to military induct. In addition, Sofsky claimed that in the territories that Russia occupied, they exerted pressure on the local parents and compelled them to send their children to schools. Russia has re-established an arm, which literally translates to youth army, had been dormant since the end of the Cold War when it was brought back to life by Russian President Vladimir Put. In 2016, the first members of UNARM, which literally translates to Young Army, began their training in Yaroslavo. This organization, which dressed children as if they were warriors, despite the fact that they were under the age of 18, received a significant amount of backlash, particularly on social media. It was emphasized that this move by Russia was reminiscent of Germany under the Nazi regime for a period of time, and it was claimed that UNARM was similar to the Hitler Youth. In preparation for the offensive in Crimea, Ukraine as it was discovered that an armed drone was responsible for one of the explosions that happened the previous evening in the portion of the Crimea that is currently under Russian occupation. This explosion took place at a military. The explanation for the explosions that took place between the evening of February 28th and the morning of March 1st became crystal obvious at some point during the night in Crimea. Two unidentified armed drones reportedly collided with a Russian military installation as reported by the Russian RBK news agency, which based its reporting on information obtained from the Russian Ministry of Internal Affairs. The news article in question did not specify the name of the Russian facility in the portion of Russian-occupied Crimea that was attacked by the HHAS. On the other hand, it was reported that the explosion of ASH caused damage to the base's administration administrative structures, echoes of explosions in the Crimean Peninsula during the night of February 28th into March 1st. A number of communities throughout Crimea were rocked by devastating explosion. It was reported in the statements made by people located in the area of Kelosak and Mezvadnoi, who used social media that they heard the sounds of explosions in the area. According to the Russian Ministry of Defense, Ukraine was the party responsible for the assaults on Crimea. The attackers asserted that they shot down six SHS during the battle. No statement was issued regarding the overall UF. On the other side, 
The government of Ukraine has not issued a statement regarding this issue. The freight ship was cut in two by missiles fired by the United States. An American warplane is seen launching an assault on a cargo tanker in a picture that has been shared on social media. The assault causes the cargo tanker to break in half and it eventually sink. The photograph looks like it was captured during a training session that was organized by the United States in preparation for the possibility that Russia will emerge victorious from the conflict. Military drills are being carried out in a variety of theaters by NATO countries and the United States. The exercises involve the processing of land and sea-based situations during the final step of the practice. A cargo tanker is. The ship, which is now out at sea, is abruptly blown apart in two by a significant explosion, and it sinks. The ship is shattered as a result of a bomb that was delivered from an American fighter jet. Fresh assistance from the United States of America to Ukraine. On the other hand, the United States is currently working on developing a new military assistance program for Ukraine that will include ammunition and support for them. According to the White House's National Security Council's Strategic Communications Coordinator John Kirby, U.S. President Joe Biden and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz will meet to discuss the additional assistance that Ukraine will require in the future weeks and months. Kirby made the announcement that the United States will be announcing a new aid package to Ukraine, which will include the necessary ammunition and ammunition support for the systems they already have, such as HAM, Mars, and artillery. However, he did not provide information on the specifics of the aid package.